In this video, we're going to make an inverting comparator using the NE5532 op amp here. So it is a dual op amp, and we have 18 volts at the rail right there, power supply. So if we come to the output here, you can see we got positive 9 volts to one rail and then negative 9 volts to the other rail in relationship to our virtual ground. I use this a lot because I don't have a split power supply. And to wire that up, all we had to do was take two resistors, make a voltage divider. So according to the rail, 9 volts at this point. I have a little jumper that goes from the output to the inverting input. So the inverting input is looking at the output and trying to hold the voltage to what we set at the non-inverting input and it is uh, really uh, that simple to get a virtual ground so we have a halfway point which now we call zero volts we can go nine volts more positive or nine volts more negative so we're gonna make a load I use this load a lot too it's just a polarity indicator so when the output has a higher voltage than the uh, the output of our inverting comparator has a higher output than our virtual ground. When it's more positive, I want the red LED to light up. So long lead, the anode is going to go down one row. Short lead, the cathode is going to go to our virtual ground. Green LED is going to be the opposite because we want it to light when the output of our inverting comparator is more negative. So we have the long lead, the anode to this jumper, which goes to our virtual ground. And we'll just use a one kilo ohm resistor to protect the uh, LEDs right there and uh, I think this I can't remember this op amp has protection for output but most op amps that I've come across they limit how much current can be output so they're pretty safe to use so now in this case we're gonna take our signal here which is a trim pot I can set a voltage to give to the uh, inputs the inputs do not let any current go through them so even with a high value trim pot, whatever voltage you can measure there will be the voltage that gets to the inputs unless there's uh, resistance on the way that may uh, factor in. But uh, we can go directly to, this case we're going to go to the inverting input because remember that's what we wanted was an inverted output. So inverting input and now we're going to take a resistor and put that from the uh, virtual ground which I can go to the inverting input of that op amp because it's connected directly to the output which is our virtual ground and that's going to go to our non inverting input so what that means is that when we have a lower signal at the inverting input than the non inverting input the outputs going to want to go high and when we have a lower signal at the inverting input than the non-inverting input, which is zero volts right now with our virtual ground, when it is lower, it's going to want to, the output's going to want to go high. When it's higher than our non-inverting input, it's going to want to go low. So we will see that right now. And for some reason, oh, this resistor is off one spot. I miswired this. The LEDs should have came on. One of the LEDs should have came on when I wired this. And I missed the roll that the LEDs were on. And uh, so there we go. So now we have it there. Now we'll go to the output. And we have a high output. There we go. So normally you wire stuff with the power off. I wanted to measure the virtual ground. And not turn the power supply on and off. So there we go. Now we are to the LEDs. We are off by a row and the red LED is lit up and so that tells us we have a low signal you can see that this is a little more towards the negative side we have a high output and if I turn the uh, trim pot now towards positive as soon as we get to about zero volts just a speck above then we get a low output a green LED lights up and then back we get the red and we can go as far negative as we want it's going to stay red and 
we can go as far positive as we want. The uh, trim pot though and the board are uh, kind of worn so they get a little glitchy so there we go. We got some flicker unfortunately. I think it's more the uh, breadboard than the trim pot. But it's getting kind of loose when I turn it to certain areas. So in any case it should just stay green all the way along. So that's something if you have that put the uh, trim pot in a different spot. In fact let's try that out. Let's go down a few more spots and I don't even think this next this next spot where there's a gap I don't even think that works so I'm just gonna put this right there and yet yeah, it feels a lot more solid so let's pop this out put that to the negative and then this one to the positive side it's a voltage divider so it's just a variable resistor where you tap into the uh, resistive path. There's a resistive path you tap into it. And there we go. So that's a lot farther though. So it's starting to get a little obnoxious. But let's see if that works better now. I think it will. There we go. We got all the way to the positive rail. So yeah, that looks like that's the trim pot. As much as the board probably. So in any case that is the inverting comparator. We got a more negative voltage coming in. The red LED lights up more positive. The green LED lights up because the output is the opposite. And with this particular circuit, I'm going to turn that before it starts beeping at me. With this particular circuit, we'll put the black probe to our virtual ground. So it doesn't matter the voltage, it's whether it's higher or lower than the voltage we set which was zero volts in this particular circuit. So 2.2, it doesn't need to be that high. We can go lower. Let's go right to where the uh, red LED is about to uh, light up if it wasn't glitchy. So 0.6 volts. And then at the output up here, it goes as close to the rail as it can. So it was a positive voltage for a signal. We have a negative voltage coming out of the output. And since we're not using feedback, to control the voltage it saturates. It goes right as far to the rail voltage as it can, which I found out in the last video. This op amp is uh, 0.753, which we see there now. So let's turn this a little more negative so that we have a positive voltage there. Measure that. So now it's just 0.6 volts above or below zero volts. And uh, so negative 0.6 volts and we get as close to the rail as we're going to get so it's probably about 9.1 and there you can see 8.2 so 9.12 to the positive and then negative 9 to the negative so that is the inverting comparator and since uh, it's a pretty simple circuit I covered some other topics hopefully you found those all interesting please make sure to like the video and to subscribe to my channel and uh, check out the links I put in the description. So thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.